praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, beloved, I'm glad you came this morning to join us in this service. Uh, once again, I apologize for running over. But the Spirit of God was having his way. Uh, and, and I believe he's going to be right here in this service as well. As uh, Jason said earlier, he's not a God of just first service. Amen. He's a God of everything. Somebody say everything. Everything. Well, this morning you can turn to Jeremiah. We're going to be in Jeremiah chapter 1 this morning. Uh, we've been doing a series called Our Core Values of the House. And we have added a couple to it. And one of them is that we would be a prophetic church. And so this morning that's what we're going to be uh, preaching on is being a prophetic church. Amen. Somebody just shout prophetic church. Amen. Amen. How many became hungry for the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to be in Jeremiah chapter 1. If you're physically able, please stand for the reading of God's word for the reverence of the Lord and not for me. But it says in verse 4, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. We need to go down to the to some places right now and speak that. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, uh, Oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Oh, precious Lamb of God, that we come to you once again in the matchless name of Jesus we thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for your mercy, and we thank you for your grace. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask you today to be in this service just as you have been all morning. I ask you today, Lord, to anoint my lips to preach and teach your word. Anoint the ears to hear it and the hearts to receive it. I pray today, Lord, that it would fall on fertile ground and not on the hard ground. I pray today that seeds would be planted into those lives today, oh God, and that it would start to be fertilized and it would start to go and it would start to prosper, oh God. I ask you today, Lord, to anoint my words, Father, that every word I speak will be words of heaven and not the words of man. Bind my tongue where it needs to be bound and loose it where it needs to be loosed. Holy Spirit, you have liberty in this place today. We ask you today, Father, to do it in the name of Jesus. And everybody shout amen. Amen. One more time, give them a hand clap this morning. Hallelujah. Once again, as you're being seated, just say we are a prophetic church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jason, will you go in my office and get me a bottle of water, please? Because I am deathly dehydrated this morning for some reason. Amen. There we go. Y'all wait. Yeah, we awake this morning. Well, look, this morning I just want to talk to you a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about this scripture right here, and then we're going to just decipher the word a little bit. And uh, I'm going to hit some some uh, about four points with you this morning. And uh, believe God's going to move in and through that. Amen. You can come on bring it to me, sir. Hallelujah. And let me just go ahead and get rid of this one. Now, in the scripture here, we, we read that it said that he formed you in the womb. He formed you in the womb. He said that he, he sanctified you or he set you apart. You wonder why people start to talk about you when you become a Christian because he set you apart anyway. You've been set apart for a reason. So let me tell you something, beloved. When you go out and you start speaking the name of Jesus and talk about this and people start looking at you funny, it's okay. He set you apart before they ever knew you. 
that I ordained you. He ordained you for certain moments in time. And just like today and this day and time, he's ordained you for a purpose. He's got a purpose for you this morning. It is because that God's word is powerful. How many of you remember the first time that you uh, asked the Lord to forgive you or come into your life? You don't have to raise your hand. But but I remember when I surrendered my life over to the Lord, and, and man, I just started witnessing the people. And then I got full of the Holy Ghost, and you couldn't shut me up. Oh, you couldn't shut me up. And, and there's some of you in here that I know when you first came to the Lord, you couldn't be shut up either, could you? Oh, but over time, what happens? You start to shut up, don't you? But here, it says like a fire shut up in my bones. Let me tell you something, beloved. How many of you got the fire? Oh, see, every one of you, if you're a blood-bought believer, you got the fire. You're just letting it be shut up. But after today, I believe God's going to give you a prophetic anointing to release that fire that he's put inside of you. It's just something special when God gives you something to say. Amen. Uh, I know a lot of you say, Pastor, God has never given me a word to speak. I'm telling you why he's never given you a word to speak, because you've never been a part of a prophetic ministry. Oh, yeah. There is churches that believe that the only person that can hear from God is the pastor. Well, not in this house. In this house, it's a prophetic ministry, and that means if you are a blood-bought believer, that means if you've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, then guess what? You can be used as well. God can speak to you. God can give you a prophetic word. Amen. Oh. This house here carries an atmosphere of the prophetic. There's several individuals in here that operate in the gift of prophecy, in the prophetic. Several people. Just this morning, as, as God was moving through the altar, the word of prophecy was coming, the, uh, speaking into lives. Now, you got to understand, son, I'm not saying a prophet. There's a difference there between a prophet and the word of prophecy, all right? Now, a prophet is someone, well, I'll get into that in a minute. I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. And if I don't stay in order, then guess what? You might hear it twice. Amen. But if I do that, that just means you need to hear it twice. All right. Amen. But we see this passage of Scripture that God gives us the reason or purpose for a prophetic ministry. He said it was to pluck up and to break down. It was to destroy and to overthrow or in the key says to throw down or to build and to plant. There's six purposes of a prophetic ministry. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about a prophetic ministry. And number one is this right here. A prophetic church is a church that believes in the full counsel of God's word. Amen, somebody. Lord. A prophetic church means we do not compromise in any way the word of God. That means that we uh, uh, believe this book all the way from the from the cover here to the cover here. We don't leave nothing out in between there. We believe every word that is written in it. And I believe this morning we're going to hang out right here for just a minute because in this world today, so many are just ripping out pages and throwing them away. But as a prophetic church, we must be established in the truth of God's word. The truth of God's word is not in trouble today, beloved. Against what a popular opinion might say, against what other churches are doing by watering down the word, by maybe sugarcoating the word, by tickling your ears or whatever it may be, uh, against being thrown out of school systems, workplaces, government buildings, and even the church. We will stand on the word of God. We will stand on it. The Word of God has been made to endure every affliction that has been sent against it. It ain't a new thing that people are attacking the Word. Amen. Just start reading back in Matthew and them, and you'll start seeing how they attack the, uh, Jesus and attack the, the disciples and the apostles and all these things. See, I don't care what people say about the Bible that it has started to die out, that, oh, pastor, you need to not be so hard on some of the scriptures that you read because it's not it's not uh, entertaining to the new generation. Uh, it needs to die out. I don't care when people say that the Bible was for that time and not this time. I'm telling you I believe every word of this Bible from the front to the back. And the reason most people don't like it is because the power that is behind it. 
There is power in the Word of God. The Word says in Hebrews 4.12, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now you know why people don't preach the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's because it cuts down to the marrow of the bone. It knows the intent of every man or every woman's heart. And that's why people say, I don't want to go somewhere that preaches the fullness of the word of God because they're convicted by the spirit of God and they can't stay in their sin when they come into the contact of the fullness of God's word. They can't do it. See, my grandfather, I have one of his Bibles that he preached out of, and he's got all kind of notes and scribbles in it. And, and man, I try to read it, and I say, man, what was he saying right here, and, and what did he mean by that? But there's one thing that stuck out to me. In the front of his Bible, it says this right here, this book will either keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from this book. Uh, now you know why people are ripping out pages, because the sin in their life will keep them from the book, from the Word of God. They cannot operate when they hear the fullness of God's Word. 2 Peter 1, 18 and 21 says, And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Keep on reading to 2 Peter 2, 1 and 3. It says, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you, who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them the way of the truth will be blasphemed, and in their greed they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. Mm -mm -mm, my, my, my. Don't think that same thing is not happening today. A prophetic church means we believe the full counsel of God's word, not just the words that sound good to us, not just the words that make us smile, not just the words that make us happy, but the words that pierce our hearts. We will not be moved by what the world tells us when they say these things have died out because I believe that there was a flood sent that covered the earth, and I believe that Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt when she turned around and looked back. I believe that a donkey spoke one day. I believe that the Nile River was changed into blood. I believe God sent manna from heaven. I believe water came from a rock when Moses struck it with, a, with, his, uh, uh, with his staff. I believe that the Red Sea was split when they walked on dry ground. I believe the Jordan River was split and the same thing happened. I believe three boys danced in the fire. I believe that one slept with the lions. And I believe a young youth defeated a nine-foot-nine giant with some rock and a sling. I believe he did it, and I believe it still happens today. Why? Because we are a prophetic church, and we believe the Word of God. Hallelujah. We believe the fullness of God's Word. Every bit of it we believe. We don't leave nothing out of it. Uh, I know a lot of people say, well, Pastor, that's a lot of Old Testament. And it was. But guess what? I, I believe that water was made into wine. I believe the man with leprosy was cleansed. I believe the withered hand, once it was stretched forth, it was healed. I believe Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead. I believe the blind men were cured. I believe that 5,000 were fed and 4,000 on another day. I believe that Jesus came walking on water, and I believe Peter stepped out there with him. I believe the deaf and the dumb man was healed, and I believe Lazarus was raised from the dead. I believe a sinless man was put on a cross to die for my sins. I believe that same man was put into a tomb and a stone was rolled before him. And I believe three days later that he came walking up out of that grave. I believe these things. And I believe in the full word of the God of Jesus Christ, the gospel. You've got to believe with all your heart. You've got to believe the full counsel of God's word. 
I believe it. I believe he went into hell and defeated and took the keys back. I believe he set the captive free. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, we're a prophetic church. See, the problem with most of us is today, and when I say most of us, you understand, I'm talking about this house, I'm talking about the church in general, is that we have started to close our mouths because we are afraid of offending somebody. We won't invite somebody to church because the way that we believe. We're scared that someone might operate in the gifts of prophecy. Well, what if that word of prophecy was the word for your friend that you were scared to invite that day that would have set them free and delivered them? We are a prophetic church. We won't stop shouting the name of Jesus because it offends somebody. We will not hesitate to preach the full gospel of God's word. Why? Because we're a prophetic church, and to be prophetic, we must operate in the fullness of God's word. We don't leave nothing out. But we read that about the uh, false doctrines that would come in. Oh, and it's happening. And the apostles did not hesitate to warn about these men that would come in. In Philippians 3, 18 and 19, it says, For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things. Beloved, don't think the same thing that happened then cannot happen today. And Paul said right there, he said, weeping, I tell you. How could a false church come into existence so soon after Pentecost? Approximately 100 years after the Holy Ghost was poured out, somebody started compromising the Word because the pews were getting a little empty. Somebody did not defend the Word of God. Somebody didn't tell, tell their generation, and they didn't tell the generation that was coming up. Somebody did not do what God told them to do. Somebody wasn't interested in the gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit, and somebody said, we will not be a prophetic church anymore, so we will not preach God's Word. Little by little, gradual change came and change the church but beloved it ain't changing us we will not allow it to change us Hebrews 2 1 says we ought to give the more earnest heed lest we let it slip what we have heard don't let the word of God slip your mind Peter uh, 2 Peter 1 2 uh, 1 12 says I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance in other words beloved as long as I got breath I'm preaching the fullness of God's Word. As long as I can see the Word of God, I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit showed me. We have to know where we came from. We've got to know the price it was paid for us to have freedom in the Holy Spirit. Men and women gave their life for the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we must not be ashamed of it, but we must be a prophetic church. Somebody shout prophetic church. Hallelujah. you got to understand something. I'm glad I got life in my bones. Oh, I'm glad I got it. I'm glad there's a fire shut up inside of me. I'm glad sometimes I get to run off at the mouth and can't shut up when it's about Jesus. I'm glad that I'm moving the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm glad he promised to everybody in here the gifts of the Spirit of God. I'm glad he trusts me with the dunamis power that God offers us. Why? Because I've seen it be used and set people free and delivered from drugs, addictions. I've seen people healed. I've seen miracles happen. How can you deny the fullness of God's word oh when it operates in your life hallelujah hallelujah say I ain't ashamed Romans 1 16 says I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jews first and also to the Greek we must never ever forget we cannot stand by and keep our mouth shut and let the world do what they feel like doing. We must be a prophetic church and tell them the things that God has laid on our heart and laid in our spirit. We cannot grow stagnant or weary. We must become like the people of God that are alive and well today and not like the people of old. Judges 2.10 said this, And also all that generation were gathered, were gathered unto their fathers. And there also arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which we, he had done for Israel. If we're not careful, we'll be just one generation away from denying the word of God. 
will be just one generation from denying the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It floors me how many people say, oh, I'm Pentecostal. Oh, yeah, I'm Pentecostal. But yet they never tell anybody they're Pentecostal. Oh, have we become a generation that cannot relate or explain who Jesus Christ is in our life? Have we become a people that is too embarrassed to let everybody know that he's the only way? Have we come to a place when somebody says Buddha or Mahalo? We say, hold on just a minute. The only way to the Father is through the Son, Jesus Christ. Have we come to a place where we're not willing to speak up and give God the glory? Oh, we've got to be in a place because of who he is, because of who he is. The prophet Isaiah said in, in Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. You got to understand, this was a prophecy about what was coming in the future. He is wonderful. That means there's no wrong in him. He's the counselor. He doesn't give wrong advice or wrong direction. He's the mighty God. No one can defeat him. He's the everlasting father. That means he has no end. He's the prince of peace. Oh, yeah. He's the only one that can bring you the peace that surpasses all understanding. He is the great I am, and his name is King Jesus. Somebody shout, Jesus. Hallelujah. Beloved, don't compromise who he is. Don't compromise who he is. If we do, we'll become like these individuals here, 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 and 12. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who knoweth let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness and of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Sending a delusion. A delusion is a, a misleading uh, of mind, unconcerned. It's when you lose your love, you become capable of anything. Corruptive ways is having the power to kill or destroy, being deadly or wicked. Covenants, being greedy. Phony words is deception, false to imagine, to pretend. See, as a prophetic church, the word of God is true and is firm. It never dies out. It never runs out. Every time you open it, you get new life out of it. It never changes. What was true yesterday is true today. And what was true today, guess what? It'll be true tomorrow. Because the Word says in Hebrews 13, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And His Word says that He changeth not. People don't like the truth because the truth will either bless you or the truth will shake you. Oh, yeah. But God's church is built upon a solid foundation. He prophesied to Peter, and he said, Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That was a prophetic word that was given out. It's built upon prophecy. It's built upon truth because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, beloved, we need to worship in truth. We need to be, uh, serve God in truth, rejoice in truth, and meditate upon the truth. Hallelujah. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, think on these things. Don't never develop an attitude that every time that I come to church, I must be entertained. Uh, your attitude should be every time you come into the house of the Lord to renew my love for you, God. Renew my love for you, God. Give me a hunger. Give me a desire. Give it to me, Lord. Fill me up. Let me be a part of this prophetic ministry. The church will stand. You just need to stay in God's Word. Don't worry about the storms that come your way. Don't worry about the world and everything it throws our way. The church was built to weather any storm, and it was built to weather the world. Just because you're in a storm don't mean God has left you. Uh, as we believe and, and step into God's fullness of His Word, he promised us a second blessing of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which brings me to point number two, 
a prophetic church does not neglect or resist the gift of prophecy. Wow. First Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 14.1, it says right here, Pursue love, yet desire earnestly spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. Somebody shout prophesy. Let me teach just a minute if I can. The gifts of the Spirit are important, and they're an essential part of the church and this ministry. Unfortunately, because some people misuse the gifts and the power that comes through them, people have quit doing the gifts or using the gifts or preaching about the gifts. God does not give us gifts for show of power, but to manifest His power. We do not worship the gifts or those used in the gifts. We worship the giver of the gifts. We cannot be like Simon the sorcerer who wanted to buy the gifts. He wanted the gift for his unselfish glory and not for God's glory. This is why a lot of churches today have gotten away from the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It has not been done the way it was designed. It's purpose. So I want you to look at some purposes of God's gifts for just a moment. Now, I, this is a, I just had to add this in. I felt like the Lord gave it to me to add. But the first thing is this right here. The gifts of the Spirit are to show forth the power and the love of the Holy Spirit in public gatherings such as churches, homes, families, and even in your people and each people, uh, person's life. It's for everywhere. It's not just for the church. Number two, it's to help make the preaching of the gospel more effective by giving a supernatural confirmation to the message. I can't preach this on my own. It's only through the gift of the Holy Spirit that I'm able to do it, which is the gift of prophecy, the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge. All these things have to operate. Number three is to meet the needs of the people. Jesus always began at a person's point of need. He ministered to their need first and to their hurts. In his first sermon back in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 19, you can check this out later, his total, the bulk of his message, his sermon, was meeting the needs. Meeting the needs and healing the hurts of the people. But on down in uh, chapter 4, of, uh, 32, verse 32 of Luke, it says, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Look what it says in verse 36. What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. When you meet the needs of somebody, you immediately gain their interest and you gain the interest of those around them. Attention always comes when you are meeting the need of somebody. If you're not meeting the needs of somebody and you're ministering, you're not ministering. Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. The gifts are given to meet the needs and strengthen the church and the body. So when someone's operating in the gifts of the Spirit, if it's not meeting the needs of the people, they're not ministering in the gifts of the Spirit. Oh, yeah. Number four is to wage spiritual warfare against the devil and all his forces. The gifts of the Spirit help you battle. Amen. It helps you battle. So when studying the gifts of the Spirit, we should always keep in mind that they build up the church. They should be edifying to the church. They should be a benefit for everyone. There's always going to be a need associated with it. They are not just for inside the church, but they're for outside the doors as well. They're for the glory of God and not for man or woman. They require somebody to be obedient to the Spirit. Oh, that's what we could learn a lot right there. We must be obedient to the Spirit of God. They do not operate independent of each other, but they operate together. They look work like the parts of the body. They are gifts, and the one being used should remain humble, and not become proud. Oh, as long as we remain humble, we can be used mightily, and God wants to do a work through us, but he wants all the glory. Every bit of it. So what's the gifts of the Spirit, Pastor? Number one is the word of wisdom. Number two is the word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirit, diverse kinds of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. When the church operates in the gifts as it is designed and desired by God, it does something else. It carries with it a prophetic anointing. And that's number three. A prophetic church carries a prophetic anointing. We must first understand that there's a difference in prophet and a prophetic church. A prophet is one who imparts or gives special messages 
or direction from God. Why many people in the church prophesy from time to time. If somebody says, I am a prophet of God, then what they're saying is that they're constantly being used in this manner, constantly speaking prophecy over people. Uh, A good example is Perry Stone. He uh, He operates in the prophetic as a prophet. This ministry is not a prophet ministry. It's a prophetic ministry. Does everybody understand what I'm saying there? All preachers should preach the Word of God and preach under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And by doing so, it allows us to go forth and give a prophetic word. But a prophet is someone specially called that is enabled to proclaim a specific will, purpose, or counsel of God to his people. They they frequently do this. They frequently communicate this message. Prophecy, though, means a divinely inspired utterance or speaking under divine unction to edify others. The anointing does not necessarily involve a prediction of the future. So when I say we're a prophetic ministry, we're not sitting around here saying on such a day Jesus is coming back. No, that's not what we're saying. you got to understand this. This anointing does not necessarily involve a prediction of anything in your life in the future. It can, however, refer specifically to, to a a public message at a time when needed. So in other words, you need something from God, and God gives me a prophetic word for you. It's a prophetic church. If someone has the gift of prophecy, the Bible says he or she should exercise it in the proportion uh, to his faith. So as much faith as you have, as much faith as you will use, as much as you will prophesy. So perhaps... This statement means he or she should testify or preach in agreement with the faith of what you believe. You can't preach about something you don't believe. Amen. You can't preach about something you believe. As a prophetic church, we are not just about the end times. We are about the anointing of God that comes with it. The anointing that uh, does not allow people to come in here and speak against the word of God. It's the anointing that lets the gifts of the spirit flow decently and in order. That's why every time we have the gifts of the Spirit move, I'll say, I felt like it was decently in order. If it's not, God will quicken my spirit, and we'll have to handle that another way. But we're going to keep everything decently and in order. The gifts of the Spirit moved in the first service, and it was done decently and in order. See, this kind of anointing that has power behind it, and it starts to shake things up. It starts to shake people up. I'm talking about the kind of anointing that makes the demons flee. They cannot be in this house. The anointing that makes you bow at the name of Jesus. The kind of anointing where people start to confess to one another their faults. The anointing that makes you weep, and you don't even know why you're weeping anymore. The kind of anointing that will break the chains of hell off of you. The anointing that makes you search yourself before you start judging anybody else around you. The anointing that is felt when you drive by this church down the highway and when you pull into the parking lot. It's the anointing that breaks the yokes off of you. It's the anointing that sets you free from past hurts and troubles. This is the type of anointing that will break the strongholds off of those that come into these doors. The anointing that allows God to let you hear your call. If you have been a blood-bought believer, God has a call on your life. So many of you have a call, you just ain't walking in it. Oh, you ain't walking in it. Somebody shout, you're a prophetic church. All right, we're about done. Number four, a prophetic church has a mandate or a calling on it to fulfill the prophetic anointing. So it goes right back to this scripture. And the scripture there, it says to root out. To root out. In other words, we're to have the anointing to get the devil out of you and get the devil out of me. To get all the bad things out. To get the love of money out of us. To get the sin of rebellion out of us. To get the lust of the eyes out of us. To get sexual immorality out of us. To get idolatry out of us. To get covenants out of us. We ought to root this out. And it only happens by the prophetic anointing. Number two, we're to pull down the strongholds. To help others overcome the flesh and have divine power in their life to pull down these things, to help others see that the battle is not always in the flesh, but it's sometimes in the spirit, to help them put on the full armor of God each and every day to be able to withstand the strongholds, to let people realize that they have the power to tell the devil to get behind them. You have the power. 
is through the prophetic anointing. Number three, we are to destroy the work of the devil. Help others that come into this house change their way of life. They don't have to live the same old way anymore. You've been set free. You've been delivered. You are a new creation. We must let them know they don't have to be harassed anymore. Take your rightful place. Number four, we're to throw down in the spiritual. Uh, we should not be afraid to fight this enemy. It don't matter if it's the enemy of alcohol. It don't matter if it's the enemy of drugs. It don't matter if it's the enemy of lust, adultery, pornography. It don't matter what it is. We have the power. And guess what? You have the power to defeat this enemy. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. And I'm telling you today, we need to start throwing down. Oh, hallelujah. Number five, we are to build. We are to build one another up in Christ. We are to build each other up in order to see life change happen. The Bible says, therefore, we are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We are to build up the house of God so others can come in here and be changed like we have been changed. The last one here, we are to plant. What does it mean to plant? It means planting seed into those around us. It means planting seeds into the next generation. We are building up a new generation. We cannot let this next generation die out and not know the works of the Lord. We must carry out this mandate. Come on up, Mama, please. If we don't do it, who will, beloved? Who will? We can't keep standing on the sidelines letting somebody else do it for us. If we wait, we'll grow complacent, we'll grow stagnant, and we'll eventually dry up and die out. Don't let the enemy steal what God has put in you. Don't let him do that. Standing in this place for a moment. Now this morning, we are a prophetic ministry. And so many of you in here have gifts the Holy Spirit. And some of you are not using them. Some of you say, Pastor, I don't know what my call is. I don't know what it is. Well, I believe today, as I was praying this morning, and as it already came to pass in the first service, I believe, God, if you're looking for your call, I believe God will speak to you today. I believe it, God. I came in this house this morning expecting it. I believe it as I've been preparing, and beloved, I usually just prepare one day, and I've been preparing for three days. I started on Thursday, and I finished yesterday. And I knew God was going to do something in a mighty way. But this is the thing. It's just like that blessing that I read. I can only read it and deliver it. It's up to you to move and receive it. So you can stay where you're at. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Or you can say, no, it's time that I take the stand. And I move into my call, into my gift. Maybe, maybe you don't operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't know. But whatever it is this morning, I believe God will show up and meet your need. So we're going to pray this morning. Molly's going to lead us in some worship. And if you say, Pastor, I, I need the Holy Spirit in my life, maybe you don't even know the Lord. And you say, I need the Lord. Maybe you backslidden from, the, from God, and you say, I need to come back to Him. Well, we're going to take care of all that right now. All that's fixing to happen. But it's up to you to receive what God would have to give you. Bow your heads with me for just a moment. Father, I thank you today for your people. I thank you, Lord, that you allowed me to, to minister your word to them. And Lord, I pray right now, God, that, that the words that I spoke were not condemning words. But Father, I pray that through the Holy Spirit, they were convicting words. Lord, change my heart first before you change anybody else's. Cleanse me of any unrighteousness or unholiness, Father. And the Lord, today, as, as people stand and they say, God, what is it? What, what would you have me do? I pray that you would start to, to nudge on their hearts just a little bit. I pray right now, God, that you would start to, to caress them and let them feel your presence. Let them, let them feel the, the comfortingness of the Holy Spirit. For, Lord, truly, we can't do anything without you. Can do all things with you. So this morning, if you're here, every head bowed and 
with every eye closed. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, you did a lot of shouting this morning. There was something that pulled at my heart. That was the Holy Spirit. He said he formed you before you was ever born. He sanctified you. He set you apart. And he ordained you. Nothing happens by accident for you. Everything is by divine appointment. God brought you here this morning for divine appointment. It's up to you to move into it. So if you're here this morning, every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm going to simply count to three. If you would say, I need the Lord in my life, or I have walked away from the Lord, and, and I need him back in my life. And then when I count to three, just simply lift your hand, and you can put it right back down. And we're going to join as a body, and, and we're going to pray. So if that's you this morning, please don't let nothing hold you back. No one will stand before you and the Father with you. It'll just be you. So if that's you this morning, I'll count to three. Just simply lift your hand. One, two, three, lift your hand. Is there anybody in this place this morning? Praise the living God. All right, this morning.